Do you know what omega-3 is? Do you know why it is important for your health? Do you know which is the best form of consuming omega-3? Is it animal? Is it on vegetables? Which is the best form? How do I know if I have a deficiency of omega-3? Do I have any symptoms? Is there any risk? Should I be taking more? Should I be taking less? How much should I be taking? Is there any relationship in between omega-3 deficiency and neurological problems? cardiovascular problems? Is there any other relationships such as in cancer or autoimmune disease? Well, let's go deep into omega-3 and let's talk about what you really need to know about it. So omega-3 oil, it's a fat, it's a lipid that comes from the family. The big family in fats, it's called lipids. When you go lipids, you have fatty acids and you have esters. Esters, we're gonna leave them on this side. Fatty acids, we have saturated fats, monosaturated fats, and polyunsaturated fats. On polyunsaturated fats, we find omega-3s. When you, omegas in general, when you see all like a chain of omegas, and then you see that in every angle, every time the, the line gets like bends, where you see the first double bond, that's what you're gonna call the omega position. So it's if it's in the position three, it's going to be omega three. If it's in position six, it's going to be omega six and, and so forth. And it depends on what omega you're looking for. So in this case, fatty acids on the polyunsaturated fatty acids that has a double bond in the position three is going to be omega three. Omega three starts with a chain. It's not just one acid, it's different acids. And it starts with one that's called ALA, which is called alpha-linolenic acid. Alpha-linolenic acid, it's an inactive form of omega-3, but it's the one that we're going to find the most in chia seeds and in, in flaxseed oil. When you consume this, this needs to convert into the active form of omega-3, which is called EPA and DHA. Only around 10 to 15% of what we consume from ALA converts into the active form of EPA and DHA. EPA and DHA are the forms that we're going to find in animal sources. We can also find just DHA in the form of sea algae. Sea algae has a form of DHA, but it doesn't have EPA. EPA, it's only on animals. So omega-3, we need to have this very clear because some people get confused and they go and take chia seeds or chia seed oil or flaxseed oil and they start taking, I don't know, three grams and they start seeing that they don't have the benefit or they don't have the effects that they were looking for. Why? Because the daily recommendation for omega-3 in general, there is not like a real consensus, but the American Heart Association recommends getting more than one gram of omega-3 per day. What does it have to do with when you're consuming from flaxseed oil? When you're consuming flaxseed oil, flaxseed oil and you're just taking three grams, only 10% is going to be part of what it's converted into the real omega-3. Then it's going to be just 300 grams. You would need to be taking three or four times more of what you were taking in order to have the appropriate dose of omega-3 in your body of omega Three. And also remember, you're going to the, to the store, you're going to get an omega-3, and when you take the bottle, it says, I don't know, 2,000 milligrams of fish oil. From, and it says omega-3 fish oil. When you go and turn around the bottle, you're going to see that you're getting 2,000 milligrams, but maybe, or 1,000 milligrams, but maybe just 500 grams are omega-3. It's fish oil, but from that oil, it's just lipids and just a part is omega-3. We already know that for therapeutic reasons or for therapeutic purposes, we need to be taking more than 1.5 grams of omega-3 per day in order to have a good treatment. How do I know if I have a deficiency in omega-3? I can get my uh, blood test. What's the amount of omega-3 that I have? But most important, I don't do that test and I, I've maybe done it maybe two or three times with my patients. Why? Because everyone needs to be taking omega-3. We all need to be aware of how much omega-3 we're taking in our diet. So I don't go and check everyone to see how much they have. I just encourage my patients to be taking omega-3 on a daily basis. But we might be deficient in omega-3. This is a problem. But it's more a problem when I'm deficient in omega-3 and I have a lot of omega-6 in my body. And there is a lot of data showing that the imbalance in between the amount of omega-3 and omega-6 raises cardiovascular risk and cerebrovascular risk. Also, when I have a deficiency 
when I have low omega-3 and high omega-6, and it could come from any source, omega-6 could come when you have an excess. Most of the excess comes from canola oil, corn, cottonseed oil, sunflower oil, or any of those oils. We are consuming that oils every single day. It's very important to remember that when we lose balance, then a lot of things start to happen. What's the ideal balance? We need to have one part of omega-3 versus one part of omega-6. What do we have right now? We have one part of omega-3 versus 25 parts of omega-6. When we have more than a relation between one to four or more of omega-6, then we start having something that might lead to worsen chronic inflammation. And if we have chronic inflammation, it might lead to anything. What could be the symptoms of this? Just if I have a deficiency in a vitamin that I can see the symptoms? Probably not. A lot of people that have deficiencies in omega-3 and they don't feel nothing. A lot of people have deficiencies in omega-3 and they might start having a relationship with skin problems, with eye problems. Some people get uh, high cholesterol because of the omega-3 deficiency, but not everyone gets this. How are you going to take it? Let's remember that you can take it out of three sources or four. You can take it in your diet. If you want to take it in your diet, you should be consuming three or four ounces of fish, maybe three to five times a week in order to have the right amount of omega-3 in your diet. But if you might think that you might be deficient because you might not be taking this, or if you might think that you already lost balance because it's been many years for you to not be consuming the right amount versus consuming a lot of these omega-6s, what we need to do is take this omega-6 away and then start consuming more omega-3. How much? You're going to look for a supplement. If you're going to look for animal sources, you're going to look for a supplement that one comes from a natural source and it offers you more than one or 1.5 grams of omega-3 per day. Number two, you're going to look that that source has been, and it says that it's guaranteed that mercury and lead has been removed from it because they could attach and this fish can have mercury on themselves so it needs to be removed and number three you need to make sure that the relationship between epa and dha it's a relationship from three to two or from 1.5 to one what does it mean it means that if you have 600 of epa and 400 of dha in that way you have three to two or 1.5 to one also i would recommend not to cook with these oils and also after you open them even if it's a capsule or if it's the liquid form, put them in the fridge because they get branched very, very easy. And they are very, very unstable to temperature. They are very unstable to light. They are very unstable to oxygen. That's why they oxidize fast. And you need to make sure that you consume them as fast as possible. Otherwise, they would get rancid and you are going to get something that is really going to be useful or beneficial for your life. Are these beneficial for the brain, for the blood, for cholesterol, for the heart, for the babies? Yeah, of course it's beneficial for a lot of things. And it's, of course it's going to be beneficial for any kind of disease. We know right now that every single disease, even if it's a mental disorder, they have inflammation in within. Even if it's acute inflammation or chronic inflammation or both, a mix of both. Every single condition or disease, they have inflammation within. So omega-3, turmeric, ginger, any compound that it's anti-inflammatory, but in this case, in this case, omega-3, is it going to be necessary? Yes. Could it be helpful? Yes. Could it help for any other condition, even if it's not the cause? Yes. So it's very necessary, and that's why it's part of the recommendations that we have, and it's one of, of the most widely known deficiencies that we have nowadays. But some people think that omega-3 is completely magic, that it might act on its own, that if I take omega-3, then every other cardiovascular problem, cholesterol problem, uh, brain problem is going to go away, and that I'm not going to have Alzheimer's because I'm taking omega-3. No. And this is when we need to remember that this needs to be part of a system that you create when you understand your diet, when you build a good structure in your diet. When it's like the, the Christmas tree, it's all of your habits and then you put the ornaments and it's all those things that you bring into life that those could be your medications or your supplements. But your lifestyle needs to be the tree, it needs to be that, um, I don't know, fundamentals, that, that part that it's holding everything up together. The rest are just the ornaments. The, the rest are just to make it look good. 
But we need to remember that this needs to be as a part of something transversal, something we really understand and something that we make part of a very healthy lifestyle. And this depends on what you eat, how much you exercise, how you sleep, how you manage stress, how you meditate, how you behave with all the toxins that we are and how we make that every single day being disciplined. It doesn't mean that we have to be obsessed. It, mean, it means that we can do it every single day, nonstop, starting from today and starting to build up those tools for the rest of our lives. And for that purpose is what we do in this channel. So please remember before you leave to share the video with, with your contacts and also please remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and to click the bell. So every time we make new videos, you're going to be the first one to be notified. Thank you guys and see you next time.